I have an Elantra. Yep. <laughs> Would you like it? I might name my daughter after it. Love it. Oh. Don't you think Elantra is kind of a fantastic name for a daughter? It is really Couldn't pretty, pretty good. Couldn't afford a car, so she named her daughter Alexis. There you go. <laughs> I got my twins, Elantra and Sonata. <laughs> Okay, are we good? And baby Kia. Is that what started the episode? My yep. car jokes? Yep. Yeah. This is Hyundai humor with Matt Rogers. <laughs> Just kidding. I am Matt Rogers, though. Good morning, good afternoon, whenever. Because you can really listen to it whenever. That's the thing about podcasts. That's the beauty of the internet. But I'm holding a cup of coffee in my hand, so I'm <laughs> unable to say anything but good morning. I am so happy to be here. I'm filling in for who normally does this? I don't actually Some not guy. Know. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, uh, then I guess we'll just leave it. I don't uh, see anyone in 5-8. <laughs> no, there you go. I mean, we're all here. We're, the important crew is here. This is head writer Hallie, producer Kendra, producer Chris, and this is What a Weekday. Can I actually reveal something to you guys right yes. now? Please. So do you remember, like, so just peek behind the curtain, a little BTS for everybody. There's a there's a prep call that happens. Mm -hmm. Do you know, do you want to guess where I was when you called me Ooh. for the prep call? Because I said, I can't get on Zoom. I'm going to be mobile. I said I was going to be mobile. <laughs> Do you want to guess where I was? Um, A bookmobile. I was at Disneyland California Love Adventure. It. it was during the parade. Oh. And I had, to, I had to run into pizza pasta in Love order to it. take this prep call. I didn't know at all. You wouldn't know because I was deeply embarrassed <laughs> at the time. Why? Why? Well, Why? I was like, That's I was like, should I lie to them and say I'm taking my little cousin? I went with two other adult gay men. Do you know how many Monday. adults leave this office to go to Disney World like every month? I am yeah. obsessed, and I knew I came to the right place. Yeah. My, my last vacation, yes. I was at Disneyland. A hundred percent. Okay, yeah. I love this. No, so I'm really great. happy that you didn't hear the ha the sounds of parade in the background. <laughs> I wouldn't have expected anything less from mm -hmm. you, honestly. And I, honestly, that's why I'm showing up here in my truth. I was like, this will be a good reveal for for on air and if anything about this episode said i seems disneyfied <laughs> sorry and that is my fault <laughs> should we get into it yeah yes yeah. here we go last week rudy giuliani gleefully taunted authorities celebrating that he had so far successfully dodged being served his indictment in arizona's fake elector case he's sort of like leonardo dicaprio and catch me if you can if the sight of leonardo dicaprio made you cry throw up and doubt that anything will ever be okay again. <laughs> you may not like it but this is legally a smile <laughs> oh god god that's like you remember that's like on friends when chandler like you ever know the episode where like he took a picture and chandler did like an insane face because yes. he can't smile mm -hmm. That's like that's Rudy Giuliani all the time. I thought you were gonna reference when Ross yeah, bleaches fine. his teeth and then they become glowing. No, uh, it's sort of the love dark. child of Ross and um, and Chandler. That's if, what I've always said about if Rudy. We're, if we're if if he, they like made it with like a bat or something. <laughs> he's got he's got the Tom Cruise center tooth. Oh wow! And I've never oh. noticed it before. See, n can I just say, mm. we, so far we've put Ru Rudy Giuliani's name in the sentence with Leonardo DiCaprio <laughs> and Tom Cruise, and it's like, are we doing good work here? <laughs> <laughs> Giuliani posted a now-deleted tweet on Friday, writing, if Arizona authorities can't find me by tomorrow morning, one, they must dismiss the indictment, and two, they must concede they can't count votes. <laughs> Rudy talks a big game for someone who leaves a visible slime trail. <laughs> I mean, I have to say, it's kind of crazy that you, you'd think that this would have been a really good opportunity for him to book the wrong venue, like Four Seasons, <laughs> yes. uh, what Total Landscaping or whatever it was. Yeah, like yeah. this was the time to not be in to the right place. Decoy. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I would agree. It's just like also the number of people currently hiding out in Florida that they're just. People are going around on TikTok finding Diddy in the Whole Foods. Like oh. I knew Diddy was in Miami oh. before it start. He started popping up on TMZ. The man was gonna be uh, Giuliani was gonna be found. Oh, well, they, yeah. Yeah, they keep having videos of like Bolsonaro just like in yes. Whole Foods in Florida. We, we didn't we didn't include it because it just happened. But apparently Rudy Giuliani today launched a coffee brand and just put out a commercial. What? And there is something where it's like as their lives fall apart, they must engage in a my pillow style start like in a new business it's almost like as the as his life leaves his body the business emerges from it i love it <laughs> I, I honestly i this is the only thing about him i respect the, the, I, the, the, the merciless brand come on now and there's something about like the the, the, eight, the man of the 80s where it's like i am a business like i have nothing else i have erased my humanity but i will still sell mm -hmm. i just think what a horrible association to make like i don't think julia yeah. i think i want to be more conscious yeah like, exactly that's the last thing i want uh, more things that i say should be cl clearer louder yeah. said with more prescience we don't need him to have any more energy no he, we gave him we did like we said we gave him a whole year year and a half of walking around speaking every 
everything through a, a megaphone. Mm-hmm. Oh, we mm-hmm. allowed that. Mm-hmm. And he is like a cup of coffee. He's he's bitter. <laughs> he's stinky. <laughs> There's brown liquid constantly coming out of him. Like I get the association. I also just think his way of hiding out in Florida is so boring. Just yeah. like what hanging out in Palm Beach. Like, why is he not in a swamp? Like, like right out of a swamp. Boat. Boat. Get out yeah. of fan I have boat, a great Rudy. idea. I, I know a place that's called the Everglades. Oh, I can yeah. introduce him to some to some alligators. Just roll it around with a snake. Right. Drinking moonshine. At this point, though, not to be macabre. Please at this do. Point, though. But like, what? Maybe the maybe the Florida alligator death is a good one for Giuliani. I mean, like, we Actually, gotta go yeah. on becoming a god at, at this point. Like, let's 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 end it with a bang. You need to go out. Yeah, you need to go out w- in a way that's going to make us forget everything else. A hundred percent. Yeah. Wipe the slate clean. <laughs> I'm all for it. I'm all Disney for it too. Death. Well, how did you guys feel about Taylor Swift having a song called Florida? I, that's one of the songs mm. on that album that I liked. I'm going to yeah. say a nice thing about... I'm we saying, talk shit about Taylor Swift every episode, and I'll do it again. No, you guys got that out of the way before said, I came? No, let no, let say was, yeah. that that is a song that I actually enjoyed, and I enjoyed it because I think it's a different producer than the person she's well, I working mean, with. I, and I also really like Florence Welch, and I enjoy that one song. Yeah. I mean, I, but yeah. now you got Florida people being like, Florida is one hell of a drug. So the line in the song mm. is, Florida, one hell of a drug, and I feel like if anything goes with like a hang 10 sign, it's, mm. it's, it's, it's that line like this it, it's it's gonna make florida people very florida i also want to say for our listeners i don't hate taylor swift but i do think i do hate jack antonoff i think that, that's actually who i have a real I love, problem with. okay wait what did he I, do to you God, i love he bleachers. made it's the same song it is dozens of the same song get him no, out of here get I, someone new in there i love his bruce springsteen cover band i uh, think it's okay perfect. well I'll now take, that I'll take the boss, the original boss himself. Thank you. <laughs> no, I say that with love. Like, I genuinely, nothing makes me happier than putting on a Bleachers album, sitting down and writing some pages. It's great. I love to bop around and pretend I'm in love, Simon. Because I didn't get to do that when I was that's in, a good, in that's high school. That's a really school. good point. And now whenever I listen to Bleachers, I'm in high school, I'm gay, yes, and yes. it's all right. That's how I feel. I'm a bopping around, and I feel like I feel like the sky is pink. Enjoy this. We just said, Hallie and I, we came around. We, we did I don't know about it. And we that, found but... it here on this episode. <laughs> Absolutely. Because it certainly wasn't happening on the Lewis Fertel hosted episode. I'm sure no. he had a lot did of lovely listen? things. Lovely, positive. No, I didn't oh. listen. Oh. <laughs> I hear enough from him in our group thread. I don't hey, need that. You are need... correct. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I do hear enough from him in the group thread. <laughs> Can um, it, Missy? And we were saying, since we're on the topic of music, we were saying that uh, Sabrina Carpenter's Espresso is the song of the summer. There's unless... no other song I know of. Not, I, that's all I listen no, to. No, I think you have to wait until Bodyguard is officially released. Oh. I th- when for, is that? You mean as a single? Excuse me? <laughs> well, you say like it's really officially tough. released. When would it be yeah. officially oh, bo- released? Um, like as a single. As a single. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. okay. Do we think that's the Cowboy, a Cowboy Carter single? Because Two Most Wanted is out there right Two now. Two Most Wanted is out right now. I think the smart thing to do is release Bodyguard next. And then for me, Tyrant is the perfect um, entrance into Virgo season. I think you're right. Also, you know what's so crazy about all these pop girlies like announcing albums at the same time? Like the, the presidential candidates are not campaigning, but the girls are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? Like these girls have to be very political <laughs> with the single releases, mm-hmm. marching towards the Grammys at the end of the what's year. What's going to be the fight song this year? Oh, baby. I don't know. Is there a, like, you mean like a fight song? Like, like, oh, like that song, fight song. Like one that oh a, for the election yeah, for, yeah. like a presidential candidate oh. picks it and then we can never listen to it exactly. again exactly there's nothing more triggering than hearing fight song yeah like a small boat in the ocean <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be hopeful I think but it's not yeah God and we all will sit here in silence for the next three minutes really just pondering that <laughs> I think either one one of them could take a Chapel Run's good luck babe I feel like it's very good luck babe oh, uh, I feel, election I feel really bad for her no I they, they don't they don't know anything they wouldn't how where would they even hear such a thing what do you mean where would the, where would either of them hear any pop uh, one oh, of my right, friends right, right, right. mom she was just on NPR a few weekends ago and a lot of mo- I got a lot of yes. mom texts Ma- about that's, Chapel Rome yes that's wow. where my mom also finds out about pop music and yeah then, then we talked about from NPR it. she was on wait, wait I think she was on wait wait yeah. don't tell me oh, shout out yeah. oh a smart move yeah the moms a, love a her. very smart move yeah because I think she can remind people of Cindy Lauper mm-hmm. mm. That's very much the vibe. That's absolutely. Producer Chris, are you a big Chapel Rowan fan? I'm going to be honest. I don't know shit about music. Oh. Okay. No, what do you know? Yeah, you, what do you listen are, to? Are you a cinephile? Yeah, I'm more movies. I'm like really nerdy shit. You see The Fall Guy? I did. I just saw it. It was well, fun. What'd you think? I think it's a little long and yeah. has some pacing issues. Well, it's a movie. 
Yeah, well, fair enough. Yeah, think, where's the ninety-minute movie? I, I, where are the ninety-minute movies? Is an amazing question. Yes, I want I, them back. I just watched Shrek Two over the weekend. Shrek Two, a masterpiece, the best Shrek movie. The twentieth anniversary. Yeah, it just happened. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow, was it the twentieth anniversary of Shrek? It Everyone was, was talking so. about it, and it would because it was the anniversary. Yeah, I just watched it out of pure coincidence. Didn't oh, well, that's fun. I just want to say something. It was the twentieth anniversary of Shrek, and that wasn't number one on the topical news items list that y'all <laughs> sent me. We're sorry about that. Unbelievable. It's like you we get Lost Culturistas in here and then you totally ignore the culture. <laughs> well, I, know, I think it's the 20th anniversary of Shrek 2. I don't know if yeah. that oh, counts. Shit. I don't know if that's quite as, as high as, on the and list. We, because we are all listeners, we know that you and Bowen are excavating years, so we wanted to save that for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, also, Matt, we right. could do it on Thursday. Listen, <laughs> we, you'll should be, we, should we just, should we just uh, as a bit with like one of our guests, <laughs> which included Rachel Bloom? Uh, maybe, maybe Rachel Bloom. Maybe we'll mm -hmm. do is just a Shrek two themed segment. I just love it. I am so here for that. Yeah. I have to say, I think she'd be really into it. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> if, if we Let's told Rachel Bloom, hey, on Thursday we're thinking a segment for you. We know you got a lot going on. It's the twentieth anniversary of Shrek two. We should dive in. Mm -hmm. I think she'd be like, hell yeah, yeah. yeah. This is yeah. This is this, this is now because meeting. now you're really yeah, getting yeah. BTS. We're all <laughs> thinking Shrek two for Rachel Bloom, mm -hmm. but now that I think about her personality, she might be a Monsters Inc. girly. Okay, I could see that. Uh, all right. Let's see that. We can put that into news. There's layoffs at Pixar happening right now. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, so sad. Layoffs are happening as we speak, no matter what <laughs> industry. <Yeah. laughs> you said it. Okay, enough of this. Enough of this. Listen, less than two hours after he said this, Rudy was served his indictment papers at his 80th birthday party, <laughs> happy birthday, boo, in Palm <laughs> Beach, Florida. At least someone served at that party because I know this man did it. <laughs> Definition of not serving. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Early reports said Giuliani was so angry, he went into, quote, gator mode. But later, it turned out eating raw chicken in a dirty swimming pool is kind of just part of his routine. <laughs> you got to eat. Said Giuliani spokesman Ted Goodman, the mayor was unfazed by the decision to try and embarrass him during his 80th birthday party. He enjoyed an incredible evening with hundreds of people who love him from all walks of life. And we look forward to full vindication soon. <laughs> the party was a real who's who of Palm Beach, featuring everyone from the process server who handed Giuliani his indictment papers to the flies that were circling Giuliani's rotting body. <laughs> I believe we have a photo of the hundreds of people who love Rudy Giuliani, right? We have a photo? Uh, there they are. <laughs> All the girls showed up. <laughs> Party. <laughs> I'm sure we've all heard about the cicada apocalypse emerging this summer. We've heard about that. Mm. And if you're mm. wondering why they came out now, baby, they had an 80th birthday to attend. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Everyone's invited. Everyone, all the girls from college. <laughs> However, according to the Daily Mail, Giuliani's special day was very much ruined with party guests screaming at the authorities and bursting into tears. And I get that. I'd also scream and cry if I suddenly realized I was at Rudy Giuliani's birthday party. <laughs> you know what though? I, this is what I'll say for Rudy Giuliani's birthday party. I bet that past apps go off. Heavy. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Just the nastiest yeah. stuff you see at like a wedding. Like that, you know that Giuliani is having that garbage at the party, and that's one thing. Like at that Aaron that's, that's like the size of a softball. Well, there like, you go. It's yeah. like the spreads that they put on Real Housewives of New Jersey. Absolutely. It, like look, <laughs> it looks like you want to eat. And thank you for shouting out that they do throw the best. <laughs> it's the best food. Mm. They have the best food. That's my culture. If you get onto the Shore House, yes, Melissa Shore House, <laughs> you're eating an arancini ball the size of her own head, <laughs> gorgeous size. <laughs> Over in New York, going over from New Jersey to New York, the last full week of Trump's hush money trial is in full swing, with Judge Juan Mershon deciding Monday to set closing arguments for May 28th. Mershon also scheduled a few minutes at the end of the trial for all the key players to mill around on stage, hugging each other like the end credits of an episode of Saturday Night Live. <laughs> I feel like this. Remember when Rudy Giuliani was allowed in that building? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Remember when he was like a celebrated America's mayor, member of the SNL community? Yeah. yeah. Mm. He was throwing out pitches. He was doing bits. Yeah. Throwing it, pitches. It was a really insane really? time. Mayor behavior, mm -hmm. <laughs> which was something we have to remember, really happened. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this trial was finished so fast, but also went on for fucking ever, which seems right. That's probably how Stormy Daniels felt. <laughs> Bazinga. <laughs> Personally, I'm an RIP to young Sheldon, we should say. You yeah, know what I, I mean? Yeah, Last be Bazinga missed. ever. One right of the there. best to ever do it. We did it. Personally, I'm happy for Trump. He can now focus on his true passion, even more trials. <laughs> <laughs>
During his cross-examination Monday, Michael Cohen admitted to stealing money from the Trump Organization while working as the former president's lawyer. Stealing from the Trump Organization is one of those things that's completely illegal, but <laughs> ethically fine, like drinking at the beach or vandalizing a cyber truck. <laughs> Cohen said he took $30,000 out of a $50,000 payment meant to pay a tech contractor the company hired to rig a CNBC poll about famous businessmen in Trump's favor. (laughs) Shameful. Disgusting. He could have stolen so much more. (laughs) I could got you a deal for much less, Michael. I pay CNBC to rig who is your favorite Las Culturistas host poll all the time. (laughs) To be fair, I always just barely win. (laughs) According to Cohen, he stole the money out of anger in retribution for Trump slashing his bonus. Said Cohen, it was almost like self-help. God, men will literally steal $30,000 instead of going to therapy. <laughs> it's like the rest of us just make sure that our email is signed up to the Staples Rewards Program. 100%. Like, that's what normal stealing from a company is. There's ways to scam. <laughs> There's ways. I mean, totally, girl, though. I mean, whatever you need to tell yourself. When I select Red Delicious at self-checkout, even though I'm buying Honeycrisp, that's actually meditation. <laughs> Cohen also said he talked to Trump more than 20 times about the Stormy Daniels situation in October 2016 ahead of the presidential election. Can I say I feel for Cohen? He said that toward the end, his hand was getting raw from all the high fives. That's pain. And love is about pain. (laughs) Turns out Michael Cohen was the last witness prosecutors planned to call in the trial. Michael, from what headliner to another, congrats, boo. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> then on Monday, the prosecution rested their case. And given the headlines about Trump sleeping in court, the defense has been resting this whole time. <laughs> the defense lawyer called Robert Costello, a lawyer who once advised Cohen to the stand in the hopes of discrediting Trump's former fixer. I'm surprised given the way Cohen operated. I was like, no way this man has ever taken any advice. <laughs> During his testimony, Judge Juan Mershon freaked out at Costello after the witness audibly commented, ridiculous, and geez, after the judge sustained several objections by the prosecution. He also said to strike part of his own testimony. Said Judge Mershon, if you don't like my ruling, you don't say geez, and you don't say strike it, because I'm the only one who can strike testimony in court. Added Mershon, matter of fact, You shouldn't say G's even outside of the courtroom. What are you, an angry Mormon in 1996? (laughs) (laughs) The defense subsequently rested on Tuesday with Donald Trump opting not to testify after telling reporters last month, I would testify absolutely. (laughs) Though to be fair, he did mumble that in his sleep. (laughs) Did sort of just sneak out there. It's so sad. You know, he'd have so much potential if he could just get over his crippling shyness. (laughs) You know what I mean? He's a wallflower. (laughs) As you've no doubt seen by now, Georgia Republican and national record holder for banned from the most Walmarts, Marjorie Taylor (laughs) Greene, fully derailed a House Oversight Committee hearing by launching a personal attack at Texas Democrat Jasmine Crockett's eyelashes. We have a clip. Do you know what we're here for? You know we're here about uh, AG. uh, I don't think you know what you're here for. Well, you the one talking about. I guess I I think your fake eyelashes are messing up. No, ain't nothing. Hold on, hold on. Oh my God, it's tough to go up first during a roast. (laughs) (laughs) The only thing missing from this hearing was the drag race rattlesnake sound. That yeah. yeah. You know that thing. I wish I could do it. I can't, as you just heard. (laughs) Your Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez leapt to Crockett's defense like a good sister, calling Green's remark unacceptable. That is absolutely unacceptable. How dare you uh, 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 attack the physical appearance of another person? Are your feelings hurt? her words down. Oh, oh, girl, baby girl. Oh, really? Don't even play, baby girl. I don't think We are going to move and we're going to take your words down. God, I cannot wait to watch Andy Cohen ask them about this during the reunion. (laughs) (laughs) While Green agreed to strike her words from the record, she refused to apologize. And Republican Chairman James Comer agreed that her personal insult didn't violate House rules. Yeah, I mean, there's probably no explicit rule against throwing a CrossFit tire against the hearing room either. We've never needed one before. <laughs> Look, it, it all brought this response from Crockett. I'm just curious, just to better understand your ruling, if someone on this committee then starts talking about somebody's bleach blonde, bad built butch body, that would <laughs> not be engaging in personalities, correct? A, a what now? <laughs> a what now? <laughs> 
I don't love the use of butch as an insult, but I do love alliteration. And if that makes me a centrist, so be it, baby. And this just in, bleach blonde, bad built butch body has now been added to the looking for filter on Truth Social's dating tab. Congrats to the community. Then Crockett announced on X that she's launched a line of bleach blonde, bad built butch body merchandise, which you can see here. Listen, call my patience Donald Trump the way it's being tried every day. I can't with all this. I just want to say, just to point out that her her name is actually misspelled. Yeah, we could have taken this off of Canva and maybe gotten it to Photoshop. <laughs> well, like, this is obviously right. CGI. Like, with, like, when you see a misspelling like that, it's like, okay, you just put it in and then no one even just read it. Actually, I... do you think that model knows what he's wearing? No, no, no. no, no. Absolutely. I don't even know if that's a real person. I feel like this might be all entirely AI. This, and I say this with love, this is a shirt that we would be wearing at a family reunion, and I yeah. know that that's the aesthetic mm -hmm. that she... That, that she is drawing from. 100%. 100%. On Sunday's Meet the Press, Crockett defended calling MTG racist. Do you think her going after your eyelashes, uh, <laughs> that that in itself is racist? I think her specifically doing it to me, yes, that was the intent. MAGA has historically been on social media doing the things where they're saying, oh, she's black with um, lashes and nails and hair. And so she's ghetto. And so to me, this was her buying into that rhetoric and trying to amplify this for the MAGA crowd. And so, yeah, I absolutely think that she only did it to be racist towards me. It should absolutely not be Crockett's job to explain this. We're talking about Marjorie Taylor Greene. <laughs> the presumption is racist until proven innocent. <laughs> On Monday, MTG posted her response, writing, Yes, my body is built and strong, not with nips, tucks, plastic, or silicone, but through a healthy lifestyle. Soon turning 50 years old, God willing, I will continue to lift, run, swim, play, sport, surf, ski, climb, and live this life to the fullest and enjoy every single moment. There is also a video of her deadlifting. Posted with the same energy of the horror movie villain who you think has died, but the final <laughs> frame is their eyes opening. Just okay, and hit with a cease and desist from whoever that artist is. Right. Really? <laughs> see ya? <laughs> we hope we see ya in court. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for laughing. I hated saying it. <laughs> and that wasn't one of their jokes that came out of my brain. <laughs> okay, but if there is a god, why did she make Marjorie Taylor Greene impervious to death? <laughs> Let's move on to something else. In pop culture news, Billie Eilish mm -hmm. released her third album, Hit Me Hard and Soft, last week. So a big week for both eyelashes and eyelishes. Hmm. This Shout out to Sarah Lazarus. <laughs> yes. Yes. Sarah we wanted Lazarus. to make sure you got the floor. She's back. She's out for two weeks. She's back. I love it. <laughs> the singer also dropped a lyric video for Lunch, the album's sexy sapphic single in which she declares, I could eat that girl for lunch. Yes, she dances on my tongue. The song is a follow-up to Eilish's thematically similar offering on the Barbie soundtrack titled, What Was I Made For? Eating Pussy. <laughs> incredibly brave <laughs> to write a sexy song about the least sexy meal of the day lunch oh you could eat that girl like a sweet green salad at your desk while catching up on emails okay girl <laughs> the album follows eilish's rolling stone cover story last month in which she declared i've been in love with girls for my whole life but i just didn't understand until last year i realized i wanted my face in a vagina hey we've all been there <laughs> Not me, obviously, <laughs> ever, never, not once, no time in the future, but a lot of us have been. <laughs> Billy also took the opportunity to promote masturbation. <laughs> Said Eilish, people should be jerking it, man. I can't stress it enough as somebody with extreme body issues and dysmorphia that I've had my entire life. And can I say, it's good to see a celebrity go to bat for jerking it. <laughs> Carry on, Billy. Pick up the torch that Fred Willard dropped. <laughs> Look, if this is what gets Gen Z to be horny and have sex, then I celebrate her. Back in my day, you had to wait until your mom took you underwear shopping and you could sear the image of the Fruit of the Loom dudes in the back of your retina for later. It's still there and you're looking great, fellas. 
In related news, Gallup polling from this spring found 7.6% of Americans now say they are some kind of LGBTQ, with more than one in five Gen Z participants identifying within that community. The numbers are up from 3.5% in 2012 and 5.6% in 2020. Hooray! The vaccine is working, guys! <laughs> We're getting them! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Look, in news I actually care about, because this whole thing has been absolutely awful for me so far. <laughs> in news I care about, Avril Lavigne, top of mind, stopped by the Call Her Daddy podcast to promote her greatest hits album. Apparently there are enough. Oh my God. And to once again publicly deny the rumor that she was replaced by a clone after dying 20 years ago. This is a real rumor for those of you out there with like jobs and lives. Nothing but love to Avril, but who would go to the trouble to replace her with a body double? You think Hot Topic has the profit margin for that? <laughs> For listeners who might not be aware, the Avril Lavigne is a clone conspiracy theory is one of the ones we pretend to believe for fun. It's not one of the obviously false conspiracy theories we sincerely believe, like the one that says Boeing somehow assassinated a whistleblower by giving him a staph infection. Think about it. <laughs> During the episode, the singer reiterated that, despite what you might have read on the internet, she is not a secret doppelganger of herself named Melissa Vanadella. <laughs> Could she make it any more obvious? <laughs> Although when someone yelled Melissa really loud, she did turn around rather quickly. <laughs> <laughs> the long-standing conspiracy theory began in Brazil and dates to a 2011 blog post that used Avril Lavigne's lyrics and photos to argue that Melissa assumed Avril's identity following the singer's debut album and subsequent untimely demise. But why Brazil? It's a country where soccer is huge, and Brazil hasn't won the World Cup since May of 2002. What else happened in May of 2002? <gasps> 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 Fortunately, the singer thought the conspiracy theory could be worse. I feel like I got a good one. I don't think it's like negative. It's something creepy, said Levine. And she added, it could have been worse. They could have denied my presidential win like my hero, Donald Trump. <laughs> oh, God, Avril, no! Over in Europe, the 2024 Cannes Film Festival is underway. So get ready to jump up and slap those raw bleeding palms together because it's time for Standing Ovation Watch. In a segment we're calling, Who Got the Clap? <laughs> The con audience clapped its fucking heart out for body <laughs> horror film The Substance, starring Demi Moore and Margaret Qualley, giving it an 11-minute standing ovation on Sunday night. People were clapping for something they called weird nudity. <laughs> Reports also said people vomited and passed out in sheer terror at the screening, which begs the question, who are these freaks they're letting go to con? <laughs> when they saw Avatar, did they just rip their fucking faces off? <laughs> On Saturday, Selena Gomez wept as her film, Amelia Perez, received a nine-minute standing ovation. She cried because only nine minutes of continuous clapping means the movie is trash. Ovation inflation is real. Interesting fact, Amelia Perez is how Strega Nona pronounces the show Emily in Paris. <laughs> Kevin Costner was also brought to tears, even the men, by the standing ovation for his Western Horizon and American Saga, which clocked in at seven minutes. Oh boy, here come the water worlds. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas Cage celebrated the six-minute standing ovation for his psychological thriller, The Surfer, by taking the mic to ask how to say, eat the rat, in French, <laughs> and then yelling, mange la rat! <laughs> At least this time it's a line from the film, unlike the last three times Nicholas Cage yelled, eat the rat, at Cannes. <laughs> Outside, many French people were seen eating rats, having heard Cage yelling, I have to assume. <laughs> okay, maybe that's how French aristocrats say it, but the proletariat it would say ratatouille <laughs> and finally Kate Blanchett blew kisses to the con crowd as her dark comedy rumors received a measly pathetic merely four minutes standing ovation <laughs> We've truly lost the plot here. Four minutes is so, so long. Imagine a crowd of people applauding for the entire length of the song Complicated by Avril Lavigne's body double <laughs> Melissa Venadella. <laughs> Those Kate kisses are currently going, by the way, for $7,200 a piece on ThreadUp.
<laughs> well, wow, what a weekday it was. Mm-hmm. Wow. I want to thank everyone for having me as a little guest at this little table. It was so good. I thank felt you. very at home. Mm-hmm. Thanks to everybody. <laughs> and uh, I guess I'll see you slut Saturday. But before that, no, uh, there's the live show on Thursday. Mm-hmm. So if mm-hmm. you're in town, come on and swing through. I want to see you sluts in person. <laughs> I bet <laughs> Love It only says see you sluts once. Mm-hmm. I've said sluts now several times. <laughs> and they had to ask me, are you comfortable saying it? <laughs> Clearly, here it is again. See you slut Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> I hope love it never comes back. Uh, <laughs> that slut. <laughs> Pride merch alert. Pride merch or else. It's a new collection at the Hilton store and a phrase I plan to yell next time I see a bachelor party at a gay bar. <laughs> there are a ton of new items and something for everybody in here. Everybody, including the Disney gays. <laughs> Whether you feel like celebrating, protesting, or you just want to piss off Disney by wearing a shirt with two Mickeys kissing on it. This is really, it's sacrilegious. Just kidding. There's tons of gay shit happening over there. A portion of proceeds from every order go to Crooked's Pride or Else Fund in support of organizations working to provide gender-affirming care and life-serving Life serving. It is pride. <laughs> and life saving resources to queer and transgender communities across America. Kick off Pride Month right now at crooked.com forward slash store. 